This video is sponsored by Vessi. Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for more legroom next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building the Doctor, a build that isn't impossible like some people have suggested. I don't really think that there are characters that are impossible. If I haven't done a character yet, it's because I probably need to watch 800 episodes of something to make it. I have to watch stuff in real time. I don't have a TARDIS. Dude, this is a Wendy's restaurant. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a sonic screwdriver, a highly advanced piece of technology that can solve all of our problems without violence. Second, we need to solve problems without violence, or at the very least, rarely resort to violence. Finally, we'll get the kind of knowledge you can only attain through an unfathomable amount of time travel. But if you're just doing regular traveling on your foot and not time travel, check out today's sponsor, Vessi. I was gonna do some kicks, but uh, can't get my feet high enough, so. Vessi. Okay, so Tulak, those are some nice looking shoes, but I have shoes. Are your shoes 100% waterproof though? Little demonstration. See the wooden part of this knife? Clear distinction between the wet and the dry. Let's put a knife in the shoe, run some water, and this one comes out totally dry. I also dunked these bad boys into Lake Superior, then went on an eight mile hike and still had dry socks by the end of it. Vessies are sustainably made using no animal byproducts, which means they are completely vegan. They use a special knitting process to cut down on material waste and Dymatex, which means that even though they're totally waterproof, they're still nice and cool in the summer, but warm in the winter. I'll be honest, I think Dymatex might be some sort of elven shenanigans, there has to be some sort of magic at work here. Because of the style and the durability, I can wear my Vessies every day, and I want you to be able to do the same. Click the link in the description for $25 off. That's Vessi.com slash Barbarian, offer code TULOCK, that's TULOCK with no C, and Barbarian with an extra R like like librarian, you don't get a discount on shoes if you spell my name wrong. And get started with a durable, stylish, and 100% waterproof set of shoes. Now back to the video. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Rule for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Charisma will be number one. If you're going to talk your way out of a fight, you have to be able to talk, preferably with a British accent or at the very least Welsh. Intelligence next, running around through the universe, is sure to expand your mind. Dexterity after that, avoiding hits is pretty important. People still shoot at you a lot. Follow that up with constitution. You can actually take a pretty substantial beating and you're great at focusing for sure. Wisdom is a bit low, your medicine is good, but your animal handling is bad. Once you've been threatened by a cat and a nun's wimple, it kind of takes the joy out of things. We'll dump our strength though, you never really brute force your way through anything, probably part of your Hippocratic Oath as a doctor. There isn't a race for a dude who keeps dying and getting resurrected in a new body, except there actually is. The reborn is implied to be spooky, but implications are silly, break them. Bump your intelligence and charisma to 16 with each of your skill points. You get deathless nature for advantage on saving throws against disease, poisoning, and death. You resist poison damage, and you don't need to eat, drink, or sleep. You can just stand still for four hours and get the benefits of a long rest. Time is weird for a time lord. You also get knowledge from a past life, letting you add a d6 to an ability check, an amount of time per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus, just kind of making you good at everything. But to be really good at everything, enjoy your ancestral legacy for two more skills like history and investigation, then grab persuasion and deception from your background. If you haven't figured it out, I really don't care about using official backgrounds, just make one up. Making one up is also an official background. It's even officially in the PHB. Artificer is not, though, that's in Tasha's or the Eberron book, but it lets you grab two skills from the Artificer list, like Sleight of Hand and Arcana, as well as proficiency with Thieves' Tools, Tinkerer's Tools, and a tool of your choice. I'll go for Matt Smith's. I could go for Calligraphy, but the doctor makes it clear he isn't supposed to be a god. Magical Tinkering lets you put a tiny magical effect into a tiny non-magical item. A little puff of smoke, a sensory effect, get creative with it, I believe in you. Creative problem solving is kind of the main thing the doctor does. For your cantrip, mending lets you put two pieces of something back together or fix a small crack in something. Attaching things to things is the most basic function of a screwdriver. Message lets you whisper something to someone 120 feet away from you and they can whisper back. With all of your Time Lord tech, it's wild how often texting someone is effective. Identify tells you what a magical item is, what it does, and how many charges as it has left if it's supposed to have charges that will give you a nice little encyclopedia of all the technical marvels across time and space absorb elements lets you resist acid cold fire lightning or thunder damage as a reaction then add a d6 of that damage to an attack next round put it in one shoe send it out the other hopefully that doesn't destroy the other shoe you'd look daft with only one shoe time to jump over to a main spellcaster since artificers are half casters and obviously we gotta do 
some high level magic by the end of this. So we're going to go for the biggest spell list in Dungeons and Dragons, obviously to make sure that we have access to the most spells. It's also the class that gets people downvoting the video as soon as they hear it. It's bard time, baby. You thought it was wizard. It's bard. I could explain the reasoning why I went with this instead of wizard, but the fantastic Jenny Deco follower pointed out in a tweet that any disclaimer in a video is a waste of time. People are going to complain no matter what I say, so who cares? This isn't a collab. Just check her out. She's great. Anyway, bard spells. Cantrips. That good stuff. Prestidigitation does a bunch of small sensory effects. It's pretty similar to magical tinkering, except it can even conjure a small object that you could use your magical tinkering on. Minor Illusion makes a tiny five foot illusion or an illusory sound. Use it to make a fake badge to get into places, though this will pair better with Charmed Person, which forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, failing that they're charmed by you for an hour. Hopefully that will lead them to believe the fake badge you made is not fake. Long Strider adds 10 feet to a creature's movement speed, helping you run away. That is what you do 90% of the time. Detect Magic lets you sense magical auras and the types of magic causing them, helping you scan for abnormalities. Well, anything more abnormal than the normal abnormalities of time and space? Thunder Wave is violence, but sometimes Sometimes you do send out an audio shockwave. Maybe that will force a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet, half damage and no pushing if they succeed. If you're chasing someone with a sonic screwdriver, don't let them near the speakers. You know, that's day one stuff. You also get another skill like medicine for free. Bards can scoop up any skill they like. You are a doctor after all. Finally, Bardic Inspiration will let you make your companions a little bit better, adding a d6 to an ability check, saving throw or attack roll, helping those British normies do a little bit better when they're traveling with you. Second level bards are jacks of all trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to any skill you're not proficient with. In some 800 episodes, I'm sure you've done just about anything. You also get Song of Rest, letting your allies heal an extra d6 on short rests. The TARDIS is surprisingly comfortable. For this level spell, sleep puts 5d8 worth of HP to sleep, starting with the creature with the lowest HP and moving up from there. They then stay asleep until they take damage or someone wakes them up. It can be a very nice, non-violent option to resolve problems. Just naps. Third level bards get expertise in two skills, doubling your proficiency bonus with them. We'll start off with Arcana and Persuasion to better understand all the fancy stuff and talk people out of fighting you. You'll get even better with that if you go with the College of Eloquence since that gives you a silver tongue, meaning the lowest you can roll on a Persuasion or Deception check is a 9 and then you still get to add your modifier. So at the moment, with plus 7 to Persuasion, that means the lowest you could possibly get on a Persuasion check is 16. That's some regular smarm. You also get Unsettling Words, letting you use your Bardic Inspiration as a bonus action Action to bamboozle your enemies, giving them a penalty to their next saving throw equal to your roll. That could help you charm them with Charm Person or sense their thoughts with Detect Thoughts. That lets you read surface level thoughts and probe deeper if the person you're targeting fails a wisdom saving throw. It all feels very sinister, but it could just be some big empathy. Fourth level bards get ability score improvement will focus on charisma since your two solutions are talking and running. Running is just movement speed. No ability score can help with that. Well, maybe. Stick around. We'll see. Knock lets you break a lock or a hinge. It also makes a big noise, but you've got the charisma to talk your way out of it if someone catches you breaking into a vault. Fifth level bards get a font of inspiration, letting you recover your inspiration die on short rests instead of long rests, and those die increase to a d8, either making your enemies worse at avoiding your timey-wimey blimey or helping your companions not die. For this level spell, sending lets you send a message of 25 words or less to someone on the same plane with a 5% failure rate going to other planes. Again, texting, so useful. Sixth level eloquence bards get universal speech, letting you pick a number of creatures within 60 feet of you equal to your charisma modifier to understand you no matter what language you're speaking. That stops you from having to use comprehend languages or tongues for the TARDIS translation powers. You also get unfailing inspiration, meaning that your companions don't actually expend your inspiration die unless they succeed on the roll, so they should definitely not be shy about using them. For this level spell, Dispel Magic removes an effect of a spell of third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with a charisma check of 10 plus that spell's level. I'm not sure what your list literally doing to pull this off, but the sonic screwdriver can just sort of eh, do stuff, so it can also undo stuff. 7th level bards can learn 4th level spells, locate creature lets you find a creature of a vague type or a specific creature within a thousand feet of you, and you know if it's moving and what direction it's moving in, your nose does have some special powers. 8th level bards get another ability score improvement, cap off your charisma modifier to make your lowest persuasion check 23 at this point. Remember, persuasion is not mind control, but a 23 on a persuasion check should let you get things going in your favor. Instead of surrender this fight, 
cry. If you had any honor, you would fight without a weapon. Keep it reasonable, and I'm sure your DM will be more amenable. For this level spell, Confusion forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius. Failing that, they act randomly on their turn. Roll a d10. On a 1, they have to move in a random direction. On a 2 through 6, they just do nothing. On a 7 through 8, they attack a random creature within range. And on a 9 through 10, they can do whatever they want. This glorious chaos lasts for a minute, depending on your concentration. 9th level bards can learn 5th level spells. Legend lore lets you know more about a person, place, or thing of legendary renown. The more you already know about it, the more information you get, so don't be afraid to flex that expertise arcana before you use it. It would be kind of embarrassing if you visited Pompeii and didn't know about the volcano, or that guy who you're gonna look like in the future. Your future. And the future? Pompeii is pretty early. 10th level bards get expertise in two more skills. History and Deception would be my picks, pretty similar to Arcana and Persuasion actually, with Deception getting the same silver tongue buff, and History helping you get more out of your legend lore when you use the TARDIS's Google. You also get magical secrets letting you learn two spells from any class, so hey, if you're upset that I missed that episode where the doctor gets really stinky toots and creates a poison cloud or something, replace one of these with one of those. If we went Chronogis, we wouldn't be able to do this, and also, Chronogis bullies other people's timelines, which isn't how the doctor works. Oh damn it, I'm doing the explaining thing I said I wasn't gonna do, let's just grab some stuff to deal with the Vashta Narada. Darkness will tint the helmet by filling an area with darkness that not even dark vision can see through, though that will also make it hard to see the person inside. It's fine. They're already a spooky skeleton. This really didn't work. Stone skin will increase the density of someone's suit, giving them resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for an hour, depending on your concentration. Your bardic inspiration die also bumps up to a d10 here. You've got so many ways to keep your companions happy and healthy. Well, at least healthy. 11th level bards can learn 6th level spells. True seeing lets you give a creature true sight in a 120 foot range. You'll see secret doors and even into the ethereal plane, so shapeshifters are not going to bamboozle you. 12th level bards get another ability score improvement or a feat. The mobile feat will add 10 feet to your movement speed. You can ignore difficult terrain while dashing, and creatures you attempt to attack can't make opportunity attacks against you. Attacking isn't your thing, but running away definitely is. 13th level bards can learn 7th level spells. Project image lets you send a visage of yourself up to 500 miles away. You can see through its senses and talk through it, so it's a great way to say goodbye to Rose. Well, eh, it's not the best way to say goodbye, that would just be doing it in person. 14th level eloquence bards get infectious inspiration, letting you give another creature inspiration as a reaction when someone uses one of your inspiration die without spending another inspiration die, an amount of times per day equal to your charisma modifier, basically it kind of doubles your inspiration die. With unfailing inspiration, eloquence bard is the bardiest bard that ever barded. You also get two more magical secrets, tensor's transformation gives you proficiency with all weapons, advantage on weapon attacks, two attacks per action, 50 temporary HP, and an extra 2d12 force damage to each attack. Dave Tennant just busts out a sword in his first episode. Maybe they should have called it Tennant's Transformation. I put the spell in for that pun. That's the whole reason it's here. It lasts for 10 minutes, and when it's done, you have to make a DC 15 constitution saving throw or take a level of exhaustion. That makes sense. You don't get physical all that often. Modify memory lets you charm a person for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. Hold on to concentration the whole time. You get to change a 10 minute long memory they have from the last 24 hours or give someone perfect recall of a memory. This one is actually on the bard list, but we're pretty busy. We need a lot of spells. 800 episodes, you know, like 40, 60 years of history. And I know wizards get more spells, but bards are more flexible. I'm explaining stuff again. I'm trying not to do that. 15th level bards get 8th level spells. Power word stun lets you stun a creature that has less than 150 HP, and they stay stunned until they can make a constitution saving throw. You could use your unsettling words to stun them even longer, basically just taking someone out of the fight. Especially since your inspiration die bumps up to a d12 here, it's going to be really hard for them to make that save. 16th level bards get another ability score improvement. Let's bump up that intelligence modifier for more knowledge. That's really the only benefit the doctor gets from time traveling since they can't cheese things by going right back before they would fail. That does some bad time form stuff. It's a way the writers can keep things more interesting. And it's also kind of why we're not getting TARDIS powers because the TARDIS is more of a plot device than something that's actually powerful, if that makes sense. 17th level bards get to kind of take advantage of the TARDIS time travel stuff with the 9th level spell Foresight, giving you advantage on all skill checks, saving throws, attack rolls, and attacks made against you have disadvantage for 8 hours, no concentration required. This isn't just for physical stuff either, it's also advantage on persuasion and deception checks with a plus 17 modifier, and I guess now that we're talking about it, your minimum on those is 27. That's fun. 18th level bards get two more magical secrets. Clone is the real time lord power, creating a dummy version of you that grows in 120 days. Then when you die, your soul goes into that body. So as long as you don't die in 120 days, you'll be fine. That's basically one season. Sorry, Eccleston stands. Eccles stands? Is that a thing? Demiplane creates a harmless demiplane 30 feet in every dimension, and when the door closes, creatures inside are trapped there, helping you deal with the Daleks in the most permanent way possible without, you know, 
killing them. Trapping them indefinitely in purgatory is better, I guess. Our capstone is the 19th level of Bard for an ability score improvement we can use to cap off our intelligence modifier, so not only will we be super convincing, we'll actually have our facts right. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have amazingly consistent charisma. With 27 on your persuasion and deception checks to get things done with British wit, or Gallifrey wit, I guess. You're also loaded with intelligence skills to nail those checks and let your DM dump their lore all over you like delicious gravy of information. Finally, you've got a ton of spells that bamboozle and bewitch your enemies so you don't have to punch them. For weaknesses, punching things is kind of good, especially in d and I'm guessing the rest of your party built characters who like to do violence so your DM will probably give you some violence to do and you can't do it. You're also pretty low on HP, with somewhere around 120, depending on how you're rolled, so you could be reincarnating pretty quickly. Finally, low strength can mean people grapple you, which means you don't get to run away and you end up getting squished by bigger aliens. But you can just convince them not to crush you, you sly devil. Talk, run, and get creative. Just don't stop talking. I'm sure you wouldn't love the sound of silence. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.